Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access a Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. All I ask, if you can do me a favor, uh, just click a like, share, subscribe, uh, and help uh, the channel uh, grow. And hopefully I will continue uh, to provide value. Uh, there was no video last night. My daughter had uh, a basketball game and then I had an NFL draft. You know, it's draft season, obviously, priorities. Now, but all jokes aside, a little bit tied up yesterday uh, with dad duties. Uh, but let's kind of go back to Monday's video. Uh, we talked about that the idea that the NASDAQ 100, if you were watching the video on, on, on Monday, you kind of see, we were kind of talking about it. Well, the NASDAQ 100 has tested the 50-day moving average four times, or excuse me, three times. And the more I kept on talking about it, and I kept on saying to myself, well, how many times can they test the, you know, you could retest after a big breakout. That's fine. You could even retest it back again. But the idea that they were pounding the 50-day moving average, and granted, they were holding it, that it was a major, major concern. And today, we lost it. We, we lost the 50-day moving average. We'll get to NVIDIA in a second, obviously. Um, but we lost the 50-day moving average today. Uh, and that's not a good thing. Again, I kept on reiterating the point that this was our line in the sand, that uh, 473 level on the queues were going to be a big deal. So, we closed today below the 50-day. Uh, obviously, NVIDIA uh, is going to set the tone for tomorrow. But before NVIDIA, we saw two days ago pretty aggressive put buying coming in on SMCI. You guys remember that? A couple of days ago, we saw big, big put buying coming in on SMCI. And a day later, Hindenburg Research uh, does a hit piece, right? A fraud piece. And the stock went down what, 70, 80 points at one point uh, yesterday. And today, right at the market, uh, right pre-market, uh, they file a late 10K, which basically is not a good thing, right? You start thinking about, uh-oh, it's the next WorldCom. It's the next Enron. And again, traders, you know, they shoot first, ask questions later. And SMCI today at one point was down 150 points. Obviously, as you can imagine, that is going to get the cues very vulnerable, right? You're going to take down all the semiconductor names because, well, that's the biggest group. That's one of the, you know, arguably the biggest group uh, in the NASDAQ 100. So uh, that was not a good look. And then after the close, you had uh, NVIDIA. Everybody was waiting for NVIDIA uh, to come in and maybe play the white knight, right? Maybe play the white knight role. And the whole question was, well, how do you analyze, right? How do you physically analyze uh, NVIDIA's earnings, right? And that's kind of a big deal. And the reason why I say that is NVIDIA has been blowing away their numbers quarter after quarter, year after year. It's been like this for a very long time. And the question going into today's session was, well, again, like everything else, is it baked in? So on the surface, it looks great, right? Absolutely great. Uh, NVIDIA second quarter revenue, 30 billion versus uh, 29 adjusted EPS uh, beats by three cents. And oh, by the way, they announced a $50 billion buyback. Everything's all good, right? Everything is all good. And initially they took NVIDIA up, uh, they took NVIDIA up three, four dollars, and then they just destroyed it. Well, I don't know these were destroyed. The, the, the options, uh, the options market was saying a potential 10 point move either way. And you see where it stopped today, right? You see pre-market, well, excuse me, after hours, it stopped at 115. Why is 115 important? Because 115 is also the bottom of this channel here of its last support. So that's going to be an important number. Okay. Um, you know, right now it's about six, seven dollars off its lows. As you can see here, as you can see here, the stock right now is trading in the 121s. So, you know, going into tomorrow, you know, it's going to need to see what happens today after the conference call. Uh, by the time you see this video later, like right now it's trading 121. By the time you see this video later, it could test back. The 115 level, again, the bulls do not want to see 
NVIDIA back below 115, because below 115, we'll take it down to 11, we'll take it down to 09. Uh, but at the same time, who knows, maybe this guy, you know, the CEO speaks, he says something crazy, he uses the word AI way too many times, and this and that and the third, and we're having this conversation above 28 and a half, which is today's high. So it's been very, very interesting. But as you can imagine, right, the fact that NVIDIA is down four or five bucks now from the close, it's putting pressure on everything else. And if you look at how stocks were acting only two days ago, and we kept on reiterating the point, look how weak Microsoft was, look how weak Meta was. You guys remember this? This is only, uh, this is only the last video, right? Look at you know, Amazon, look at Google, look how weak they are, look at Tesla. This And this is happening, this was happening when the 50-day moving average was above supply. So now that we're below supply, you, you guys know kind of by now, if you've been watching this broadcast, what this means, it means the damn bulls better wake the hell up tomorrow, or take a stand and rally back and close above 470, 473. Because if they don't get above the 473 level, right? If they don't get back above the 473 level, folks, I, again, I don't need to remind uh, everybody what happens when you lose the 50-day moving average. Again, we lost the 50-day moving average on July the 24th and the queues went from 474. And in two weeks, we went to all the way down to 423. That's a 50-point move in the NASDAQ 100. Again, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not a bull. I'm not a bear. I don't, I'm not a fear monger. I'm just telling you facts, right? Whether you acknowledge the facts or trade off the facts, whatever the case may be, that's up to you, right? That's a, you know, it's your, you know, your dollar, your dance for it. But the point is the bulls do not need, do not need, do not want any type of building below that 473 level. And if we start, if we start putting in a ceiling below this 473 level, you're going to have lower prices. Again, guys, remember, from, from the time we lost the 50-day moving average to the, when the sellers got exhausted at the bottom of the range, NASDAQ lost 9.4%. This is you know this was a two-week period of time, so it's very important. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, very important uh, that the bulls make a stand, that the dip gets bought, and we reclaim one, you know, we reclaim 473 on the close. Because again, if you, if you didn't think, you know, if you thought that, you know, the last time it was just a fluke thing that the NASDAQ decided to lose 9.4%, when we lost the 50 day, I, I promise you, it's not a fluke thing. That's that's what usually happens. It's called technical damage. And if you're not, again, if you haven't learned your lesson from only, what, from only July the 24th, and again, granted, there was a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal V-shaped recovery in, in the next uh, in the next three weeks. But the point is, folks, be prepared. We, we always talk about that's the common message every single video, whether it's long, short, and indifferent, be prepared. So we know the 473 number is a big deal, right? We know it. We know we closed today, uh, the first day below the 50-day moving average uh, since reclaiming it back uh, only two weeks ago. So we know all this stuff. So if you are a trader, don't buy dips the first day, right? Don't buy dips the first day. Let the market prove to you that it can get back above the 50-day moving average. Let them take the machetes and start cutting trees so you can have a clear pathway so you can make a decision. But the idea that somebody turns around and go, the first day I'm buying dips below the 50-day moving average, that could be a very big problem. As you, again, as you saw here from uh, the loss of the 50-day moving average going from 473 uh, all the way down to 423 in a matter of weeks. So it's very, very important that the bulls defend. If you look at stocks today, they got hit, man. They really got hit. Um, you know, we, we had some pretty good pivots today. Uh, we had some pretty good pivots today. Again, that's not the big story. Uh, Meta 515 twice held 515 twice. If it builds below, it can flush. Right? Meta went down to 12. Not a big move yet, but that's the point. Not a big move yet. If we're below the 50-day moving average and they keep on pressing and pressing and pressing, right? Watch, you know, watch Meta tomorrow. This thing starts losing today's channels. Then we go down to to 09. You know, again, not everything's gonna be the biggest moves in the world. Uh, like uh, Apple actually gave an upside pivot this morning, 229 went almost to 230. Uh, Microsoft was pretty good, caught a couple of bucks there, 410 if it builds below can flush. And the significance behind uh, Microsoft is it lost the fit, it lost the 200-day moving average. You see this? If Microsoft loses today's channel tomorrow, right? Ch check this out, guys. This is the linear regression line. That's where it stopped. If Microsoft loses today's channel tomorrow, then you have room all the way back down to this 400 level to this 395. We saw short-term 405 uh, 405 weekly puts. We saw some 400s. So again, be mindful of these levels. So again, nice, you know, nice pop. Excuse me, nice move on Microsoft. Hood didn't do anything. Path didn't do anything. 
Tesla got hit. Tesla's been getting hit. Uh, Tesla, 20694. If it builds below, uh, can flush. Here is Tesla, right? Here is Tesla. Took out the 20694. Traded down perfectly to this uh, 203, 202 level. If Tesla starts losing this 202 level, guys, this thing goes to 196. There is no... You know, there is no, uh, you know, there, there is no uh, area of psychological $200 defense. Yeah, maybe for five, 15 seconds, but there's no, there's no demand from today's lows all the way down to 196. So again, be mindful. Again, if you're a Tesla investor or a Tesla trader, be mindful. If it loses today's range and confirms uh, today's channel, right? If it confirms today's channel, the 200 day SMA, if you think the 50 day moving average is big, well, what do you think happens when you lose the 200 day, right? So it's a big, big deal here. These are big levels coming into play. Uh, for the next couple of days. Uh, so Tesla was good. Uh, what else we got? Okay, AMD got massacred. AMD got absolutely massacred. Uh, 148.44 to builds below can flush. Here was AMD, right? Here's AMD, lost the 44.40s. Uh, what, excuse me, lost the 48.40s, went all the way down to 44, got hit pretty hard. Uh, I think that was it. I think that was it. Yeah, this is, these are just all upside and downside pivots for NVIDIA, nothing... Uh, nothing is hitting uh, just yet, but that's it, guys. So again, the bulls need to step up tomorrow. They need to reclaim back uh, that 473 level on the Qs. Uh, the bears, what they need to do, they just need to, needs to keep on pushing. They need to start uh, making the bulls feel uncomfortable. They need to start uh, the bulls, you know, losing major levels like Microsoft the 200, Tesla potentially the 200. These are big deals. And if you start looking, and if you start looking at a lot of charts, you'll start seeing a lot of potential names that potentially, again, can have severe technical breakdown. So again, I don't know when you're going to be watching uh, this video. As of right now, uh, in video right now, is like a 120, right? It's trading at 120 right now after hours. The big levels tonight, right? The big levels tonight prior to uh, the ECN close at 8 o'clock is the 15 level. 15 is that opening range low. And it's also uh, the rising, I think it was the rising 65-day uh, EMA. So it stopped there perfectly this evening. But if the if the conference call is good and starts to wake up and starts taking out today's highs, maybe you could go back to the last week's highs of 3120s. We'll see. We'll see, guys. So again, important day tomorrow. Uh, for us, again, it's just business as usual. Whether you're bullish, bearish, or indifferent, act like a pro, be prepared on both sides, and good things usually happen. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night, and I will see you all tomorrow.